Good evening, Mount Nebo Church family. We praise God tonight. We give him thanks, honor, glory, and praise. Again, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We come into his courts with praise. We come tonight to be thankful unto him and to bless his name. Truly the Lord has been good to us. We are indebted to him for all that he has done for us, in us, and through us. Uh, nothing that we are capable of doing on our own accord, but God empowers us and he gives us the wisdom, the knowledge to perform whatever task he has laid before us. Tonight, I want to continue uh, our series that we started here. Uh, we talked a little bit about last week, life overflowing, life overflowing, and we utilize Ephesians chapter three, uh, verses 19 through 21 as sort of our foundational passage. Uh, and so we want to pick up tonight uh, somewhat where we left off last week and certainly hopefully you are enjoying this series as, as I am uh, and hopefully you're picking up something new that can be applicable to your walk with Christ and your everyday living. So let's pray and then we'll begin for tonight. Father, we thank you once again for loaning us this time together as we bask in your glory and in the richness of your holy divine word. Father, it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. We are absolutely and completely nothing without you. Now, God, take us and make us and mold us according to thine own election. For we are nothing more than potter, clay in your hand, who are you are the potter. And so, Father, we thank you now for being our master. We thank you now for being our maker. We thank you now for being our all in all. Take control of this lesson. Let it be what you would have it to be tonight for the glory of your name and the advancement of your kingdom and the edification of your people. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Life overflowing. Actually, tonight I want to change the topic just a little. <clears throat> and I want to talk about how to live, how to live an overflowing life, how to live overflowing life. Let, let's read the uh, foundational passage again, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 19 through 21. And I want to read it tonight uh, from the ESV version, the English Standard Version. Beginning at verse 19, Paul says, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. How to live an overflowing life. The late Dr. Miles Monroe, in his book entitled Understanding Your Potential, says this. He says, everything that was, everything that is, was in God. Think about that tonight. Everything that was, past tense, Everything that is, present tense, huh, was in God. He says we have to start with God before God made anything, before he created things, there was only God. Now you got to wrap your mind around that if you can. And so he goes on to say, so before anything was, God is. God is always in the present tense. So before anything was, God is. God is the root or source of all life. 
That's, that's what he closes with. God is the root or source of all life. So think about that for a moment when we're talking about how to live an overflowing life. There, there are some things that have to be in the proper order. That is, if you're going to live an overflowing life, God has to be where God should be. And that is, God is, and so before everything was, before anything came on the scene, God was already there. And so since God was already there, and God is all and God is, then we have to start with God. We can't start with ourselves because then that's improper alignment. It, we can't start with other people. Again, that's improper alignment. We have to stay in proper alignment. And the only way we can do that is we have to start with God. Hmm. Everything that was and everything that is was in God. If we're serious tonight about seeing our future change, then we must start putting faith in the promises of God. We gotta start putting some faith in that. We gotta start clinging to those promises. We have to start claiming those promises. We have to start believing those promises, you know, we, we can't go forward in life simply with a pipe dream mentality or the pie in the sky mentality. No, we, we have to start with a secure and sure foundation. And that secure and sure foundation is God himself. And so God has given us some promises both Old Testament and New Testament, and which we can build our lives on safely and securely. Again, we can build our lives on the promises of God safely and securely. We, we can do that safely because God is the one who stands behind everything that he has declared. We don't have to wonder uh, if God is going to default on any of his promises. No, God has already assured us in his word that before my word should what? Fail. That's default. Fail. Heaven and earth will pass away. So that's safely and securely we can stand on the promises of God. God's promises, Mount Nebo and friends tonight, should become the new foundation of your mindset. You know, if you're gonna change your outcome, your outlook, you gotta change your mindset. And you know that old adage, junk in, junk out. Whatever you put in, that's what's going to come out. And so if, if, your, if your mindset tonight is, I want to change my outlook and my outcome, then I got to change the information that's going in. You know, computers are great tools, but they're only useful to the point of what data goes in. You know, whatever we put in, that's what the computer will spit out. And, and so if we're putting in wrong calculations, if we're putting in wrong information, what, what are we expecting to get? We're gonna receive wrong data and wrong information because that's what we put in. It's the same principle in life. What we put in oftentimes is what we receive. And so if we're going to build our lives safely and securely, we have to do that 
on the promises, the word of God. Here it is. Second Corinthians 1 and 20. New King James Version. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. Did y'all hear that tonight? For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Hmm. So when we consider the promises of God, they remind us of the faithfulness of God. When we consider the promises of God, they remind us of the faithfulness of God. His promises then are the core components, the core beings of our relationship with him. Everything builds upon having that proper alignment, that having those core components, the promises of God operating in our lives. And not just operating, but that which we choose and elect to build our lives on. Without his promises, our relationship crumbles. So then, if God promises, reminds us of his faithfulness, and they are the key components of our relationship with him, where then lies the disconnect? Where does the disconnect come from, or come into play? What is the root cause of the problem tonight? Hmm. Many people are suffering from what Rick Warren calls FOMO syndrome. FOMO syndrome. He says the FOMO syndrome is the fear of missing out. The fear of missing out. Here's some things that he says when he's talking about the result of this FOMO syndrome. He says people who have this syndrome are suffering from overbooked calendars. <laughs> you got too many things on your calendar. He says people who suffer from this, this syndrome have overextended bank accounts, overdrawn credit, overloaded emotions, overworked bodies, overcrowded days. And then he says, the last one is, he says, you overvalue the approval of other people. <laughs> my God, my God, when, 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 I, when, I, when I heard that, I'm like, wow, it, it's like a, a, a light went off in my mind because I know people like that. And I'm not after anybody tonight. My objective is, is, is to lift you up, to empower you, to, to rise above these, these things that keep holding you down and holding you back to give you needed and helpful information so that you can live life not by human standards, but live life by God's standards. There's a big difference in that. And, and that's where a lot of us have gotten in trouble is that we are living life by the standardization of other people. And God never told us to live life according to others. He has called us to live life the way he designed it to be. Hmm. And so Rick Warren, Hit, it on the, hit the nail on the head when he said that many people are suffering from the FOMO syndrome, the fear of missing out. 
I got to be here. I got to be there. I, I can't miss this and I can't miss that. Well, listen, when you start overcrowding your calendar and you start overextending your bank account and you start spending more credit than you have, when you have overloaded emotions, here's some things that will happen that I, that I, that I just took some notes and I wrote down these things. Here's, here's what happened. And we see it all around us. We see it, it rampantly in our communities and we see it all over this country. People are always on edge. It was real simple to me. And I started just thinking of this back just, just a little bit. I said, man, seem like people are always on edge. Emotions are all over the place. You, you, sometimes you don't know who you're talking to. You, you thought you were talking to Tom, and in the midst of the conversation, it ended up being John. And before that, you, you ended up talking with Chris. You ended up talking with a plethora of people, and you're only looking at one person. But th their emotions are all over the place. We're easily offended today. Think about that tonight. I never, I never, I've never seen some of the stuff that I've seen in the last few years previously in my life. I'm like, it's, it's like, what happened? You say something and, and you didn't, maybe you didn't say it just right, but your intentions was never to offend, but you, you just uttered a simple word, the ice cream truck is coming down the street. Oh, you think I want some ice cream? People get offended over the slightest and, and simple things. And you say, man, what did I say? Did I, how did I, did I say something wrong? Did I say it aggressively? Did I say it too softly? How did I miscommunicate the intended point, my intentions were never to offend you, but somehow you became offended. It's because people's emotions are all over the place. Here's another one. We cut people off in traffic, only to go nowhere. And thus, road rage, in some cases, is the end result. That leads to unnecessary harm, both to life, people, that is, and property. And, and sometimes it ends with a tragic event, that is death. Somebody ends up dying all because someone was a little too impatient and they cut off somebody else and that person already on edge themselves and that sparked something in them that now they're chasing after the other person and now they're side by side and now cars and vehicles come together and now people stop, they get out of the car, knives, guns or whatever and now all because of what? Our, our emotions are all over the place. And, it's, and sadly, I'm with, with Rick Warren on this. People are suffering from the syndrome of FOMO, the fear of missing out. Here's a thought to remember tonight. Don't allow your life to be shaped by the presence or the absence of things. Hear, hear me, hear me good on that. Don't allow your life to be shaped by the presence or the absence of things. Life is more than things. Life is, is more than uh a car. Life is more than uh, a house that you can't really afford. Life is more than 
material things because if our life is simply based, based on material things, we are building our lives on the wrong thing. Building our lives on the wrong thing. Life is more than that. Because there's going to come a point in time, I, I won't call the name of the person who said this, but, but, but somebody, there was a conversation one time with some fellas and they were talking and uh, they said, oh, man, you, I know you, you got to be in good shape. You, you retire and say, yeah, you know, I've been blessed to be in a good financial situation. But here's the thing that I stuck a pen in that the person said. They said, what good is money if you can't spend it? Think about that now. What, what good is money if you can't spend it? And my, and my takeaway was, what good is it if you can't really enjoy it? Now, sickness and disease have come into your body and and you got money, but you 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 too sick to travel. You you got money, but you don't care about buying another suit or another dress. You you got all the money that you need, but but you don't care about about all of these other things because now life has come to a place that money cannot buy good health. Talk to me tonight. Yeah, there are some things. Beloved, that money cannot buy. That, there's a lot of people who got, got money, but they don't have any peace. There's, a, there's people who have lots of money, but they don't have any joy. That, there's people who have lots of money, but they don't have love. I'm talking about real love, true love. They got a lot of people around them, but that's not love. That there are some people, and I told you some time ago, that there are people who will hang around simply for what they can get out of you. And if they think that they can benefit from being around you, they'll hang around you, but they're not in love with you. All right, talk to me tonight. So, FOMO, fear of missing out causes us to have a disconnect in our relationship with God. God is trying to lead us and guide us in a certain direction, but, but we don't want to go that way because we're, we're focusing on what the world says uh, we ought to be. We're, we're so caught up in what the world says it, it's popular and hip and in, and, 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 and if you're going to be considered to be a part of the in group and the, and, 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 and the person who's on the move and doing things, this is what you got to do and here's where you got to be, here's what you got to drive, here's where you got to live. No, you, you got to do this thing the way God has designed it to be. Mm. Here it is, Colossians 3 and 15, amplified version. Let the peace of Christ the inner calm of one who walks daily with him. Be the controlling factor in your hearts. Deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace indeed you are called as members in one body of believers. And be thankful to God always. There are two basic methodologies, if you will, to all of life. Doesn't matter uh, where you sit on the spectrum. It's really two basic methodologies of all of life. That is deficiency or lack, or excess of, or an overflow. Either, either you're in the mindset, the mode of, I don't have enough, or you're in the mold set of I, I have enough and in fact, if I'm honest, I have more than enough. Stay with me. The lack mentality is this. I don't have enough. I don't have enough of that. I need more, I need more of this, I need more of that. 
and such that we have this mentality that I'm lacking something. Huh. But the excess and the overflow mentality is God has more than I ever need. Uh, my, my, my. My, my late, my late Aunt Cassie, she was here tonight. She would say something to us like this. She would say, he's the God of more than enough. Think about that. When we think about God and we think about who God is, he is the God of more than enough. There's not a single need in your life or my life tonight that God has not already met or cannot meet. That there's not a need in your life that God has not already met or that he cannot meet. Whatever you have a need for in your life tonight, God can meet that need. But we got to be willing to allow God to meet that need. We got to do it God's way. We, we got to allow God to take control. We got to allow God to be the pilot of this plane, not the co-pilot. Many of us, we want to sit in the pilot's chair and put God in the co-pilot's chair. No, that's reverse thinking. That, that's wrong thinking. God has to be the pilot, the conductor of the train. Here it is. Very familiar. Psalm 23. We, we read it, we quote it. Uh, most of us can quote it without even opening up the Bible. Verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You read it too fast. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's not a deficiency mentality right there. No, David is not talking from a lack perspective. David is talking from the excess, the overflow mentality. David says, everything that I need, God supplies. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Then look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. And I want to, I want to read it from the New King James Version, first of all. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's a mighty God right there. You anoint my head with oil. That's significant. My cup runs over. Did y'all hear that? Huh. He says in verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But then verse five, he says, my cup runs over. That's excess. That's not a deficiency mentality. That's an excess mentality. And if the Lord truly is your shepherd, then why are you suffering from a FOMO syndrome? My God. My God. Look at this. The NIV says, about that same verse, verse number five. NIV says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. <laughs> That's an excess mentality. It's an excess mentality. But perhaps tonight, Part of the issue again is, is that you're suffering from the FOMO syndrome, but also in the in, in that same sense, discouragement has set in. Joshua 1, 8 and 9, 
gives us the cure for discouragement and the key to victory. Notice what he, what he says, what, what God says to Joshua. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Did y'all catch it? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Cure for discouragement and the key to victory. Cure for discouragement and the key to victory is what he says in the opening. Don't allow the word of God to depart from your mouth. But you gotta what? Meditate on it day and night. That, 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 that reminds me, that reminds me, that reminds me of Psalms 1 and, and thinking about that. Let's, let's real quick, let's real quick, let's look at Psalms 1 real quick, real quick, real quick. Psalms 1, New King James Version. It says, blessed, uh, my God, look at this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Watch this. But his delight is is in the law of the Lord. That, that's, that's the same thing in essence of what God is saying to Joshua and what he's saying to us tonight. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. Well, what's the results of that? What's the results of taking on that type of lifestyle and mannerism. Here it is, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Notice where he where, where he's where he's gonna be planted. That's metaphorically speaking. That that his life will be what? That brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. My God tonight. Did y'all see the results of that? Uh, of making God the, the, the foundation of your life, making his promises the core components of your life. When you take his word and you meditate on it both day and night, it changes our mindset. It changes our walk and our talk. It changes our conversation such that we no longer live for the glory of self and others, but we live for the glory and the approval of God. Mm. My God, I told you I was enjoying this 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 this, this series, and I, let me let me wrap it up with this tonight, because. I got more to say, but I keep running out of time. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. That just means that we got more to go in this series. And I want to share with you from my heart because I want to see you live a life of overflow. And listen, I'm not just talking about dollars and cents or materialistic things. I'm talking about being a whole man and a whole woman. I'm talking about living life to the point where you're not pursuing things and that you don't feel that your life is void because you don't have certain things. No, my life is complete when I have God in my life. Those things, houses, and cars, and, and clothes, and jewelry, all, all that stuff is a byproduct. Because when I leave this world, when I leave this life, I can't take anything that with me. The only thing that's going to matter is do I have a right 
and proper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all that's going to matter. He, he's not going to ask me about, well, what, what is your financial portfolio look like? No, no, I need to be rich in Christ Jesus. I need to be rich in his mercy. I need to be rich in his grace and in his word such that I know him in the pardon of my sin. That's all that matters to me. I'm not knocking having things, but you got to have a proper order when it comes to having things. God has to be first. Let me say this, and I'll shut it down with this. This talking about discouragement and the key to victory. Don't give up during the waiting phase. Don't give up during the waiting phase. Don't misunderstand me when I say this. God is not in the business of overnight success. Now don't, don't, don't take that out of context. Quick miracles are possible. God can do it. God can do it in an instant. God can do it right now. But oftentimes, God will take us through the valley of waiting. And when we have to wait because our emotions are all over the place and we have this FOMO syndrome that we're missing out on something, we become impatient even with God. Don't give up before you see the results. Most important, don't give up on God. Here's what the writer of Hebrews 6, 9 through 12 tells us tonight. He says, but beloved, we are confident. Did y'all hear that? We are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. Listen to what he says in verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget. God is not unjust to forget. God is not unjust to to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. My God tonight. Sometime God will make us wait. But that doesn't mean that God has denied our requests. God is in the process of maturing us and causing us to grow and properly develop. So how to live a life of overflow. You got to get rid of that FOMO syndrome. You got to trust and believe in the promises of God. Make God the foundation of your life. You got to think and meditate on his word. And you can't give up during the waiting phase. Because, listen, and y'all have heard me say this before. For those of you who are bakers or who even enjoy baked goods, you got to gather the ingredients. First of all, if you're going to make a cake, you got to gather the ingredients. Then you got to mix the ingredients. If everything is not dispensed at the same dosage level. Ah, talk to me tonight. That, some, some things are half a teaspoon. Some, some things are, are four cups of this. And some things are one egg. Some other things might be two eggs and, and so forth and so on. So everything is not dispensed at the same dosage level, but all things are needed to make that cake. Whatever cake you're making, all of those ingredients have to be mixed in together and then the cake has to be placed 
inside the oven at the proper degree. Talk to me tonight. Talk to me tonight. If, 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 the, if, the, if you're making a cake and the recipe calls for baking that cake at 350 degrees, don't put it on 400. <laughs> Uh, that, that's several dangers, and certainly great cooks and bakers know know this better than I. But 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 just off the top of my head, or what the limited knowledge that I know about cooking, when when you cook stuff at a higher rating than what it should be, that there are, there are a couple of things that pop out to me. One, you cook it too fast, and and, and you burn the outside. And the inside has, is not ready yet. yet. You, you, it looks like on the outside that is ready, but internally it still needs to be baked some more. But because you turned the heat up too high, you overcooked it. And so God, rather than overcook you, God will put you at 350, which means you got to wait. Talk to me tonight. You, you got to wait. Till the time expires for the right kick to come out of the oven. Don't give up in the waiting phase. Hang in there. Trust the process that God is orchestrating in your life. I guarantee you tonight, you won't be disappointed in the outcome. God bless you, my neighbor and friends. Till next time, how to live a life overflow. God bless you.